Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guys. CIG recently announced that with 3.23.1a, they had closed the duplication bugs that had been found and exploited in the 3.23 branch. Moreover, they announced that they had removed what is likely billions, if not trillions, of bogus alpha UEC from the economy and banned 600 plus players who had been systematically exploiting those bugs. Anyhow, one of the first notices I saw this obviously appropriate action by CIG was a video from Captain Foxy Lobby, who, before profusely endorsing the action, strangely gave lavish thanks and praise to an anonymous person who donated 3 million Alpha UEC to his personal game account. Which brings up the question, how is Captain Foxy Lobby like the dancer who overlooked their partner's ferrous metal mid-leg joint replacement? They both failed to see the irony. So, what's my point here other than a very long setup to a fairly mediocre pun? Well, I thought that it might be a good lead into a discussion of what I feel makes a good tester. And by this, I mean both in the sense of a productive tester as well as an ethical tester, which is quite relevant since any day the Evocati will be getting the 3.23.2 patch to start whacking away at. Now, most of these comments will pertain to EPTU and PTU testing and not to live. Which brings us to thing one. Know the type of testing that you are doing. Live testing is mostly focused on simulating a full-scale production environment and finding problems that only become apparent with scale and scope. So play the way you would normally play. The earlier testing phases, though, are about putting new features under the gun for bug finding. So one thing to do to be a tester is to check the issue council. You should be particularly looking at two things. First are the almost confirmed bugs. This is where you can most easily have a big impact on the game if it is feasible for you to try to be duplicating them. The second is the recently confirmed. It is not going to do any good to duplicate these. They are already confirmed. In particular, if they are harmful to the game, which is where testing, in the case of the duplication problem, crosses the line into exploits, when a bug is both already confirmed and harmful to the game. The next main rule for being a good tester is to read the damn patch notes. Often though, you're in a hurry to get testing and the patch notes are often long. So there are three main sections that you need to focus on. The first is the testing focus. Be sure to have a few of these in your script. The second are the features that are not ready for testing. Obviously, don't waste your time with those yet. And the third are the new game features even if they aren't in the testing focus. The known issues are also useful mostly as a way of checking before you report something as a bug. And then there is this unusual hint. Don't feel like you have to test everything. Test what you are interested in testing and good at testing. If you suck at dogfighting, then don't feel that you have to test it if there is a mention in the patch notes of a weapons rebalance. You don't really have the context to do a good job of evaluating that, rebalancing anyway. Your testing strengths and your game strengths are the same, which means that unless it's in the not ready for testing list, you shouldn't feel that the testing focus and the new features are a fence around your testing. If you are a mining maniac, then by all means test mining in a new PTU or EPTU patch, even if there is nothing in the patch notes about mining because any new or altered feature has the potential to introduce problems far beyond its scope. And if something has inadvertently broken mining, who else is going to find it? Which also means that the successful testing isn't just about finding new bugs and confirming unconfirmed bugs. It is about validating that things haven't been broken. And since no Q&A department can go back and revalidate everything that has already been finished, only a large cadre of players can do that. So if you want to be the Meister tester of mining, go ahead. It's good. So this brings up something that I hinted at earlier. Have a testing script. The testing script is assembled from the testing focus, the new features, and your personal desires. It is basically an itemized list of go here, do that, check that. By having a plan, you will be much more efficient, effective, and complete in your testing. Now, speaking personally, when I am creating a testing script is essentially an outline of the eventual script that I will be using when explaining these new features to you. That way, not only am I testing, but I'm also rehearsing exactly what I will be need to record when the NDA gets lifted. 
A variation of this approach can work with more typical gamers. So, for example, ask yourself how do you plan on using your persistent hangers? What scenarios do you want to be able to use them for? Well, there you go. That is the structure of your testing script. One reality, though, is that you might not get a chance to complete your script. Particularly with early EVO releases, the crashes come fast and frequent, and you may spend an hour getting out of your hab. It may make you feel like a failure. But crashes aren't failures to a good tester. Crashes are data. The only failures are failures to try and failures to report. So crashes, that brings up an interesting question. What do you think that you caused the server crash? Do you try to duplicate it? First of all, be skeptical. There are possibly hundreds of people on the server who were doing something right before the server crash. Presuming that it was your something is a bit of a stretch. But also bear in mind that unlike before, there are severities of crashes. Some things that feel like how server crashes used to look are now client hangs. Since these affect only you, just go ahead and try to duplicate it. Next are DGS simulation server hacks. These usually mean about a minute or two of everybody being stalled while a server error message appears on screen. This inconveniences everybody, so only attempt to duplicate them enough to confirm. Then report and avoid those circumstances. Which brings us to the point of discussing testing negative gameplay. Approach this as a proof of concept test. So for example, I found that it was possible to completely cheese win a particular FPS mission from a distance using, using ship weapons. I even did a cheeky video on it. And then I let it drop. Never did that mission that way again until the next full release when I tried to do another proof of concept on it and discovered they seemed to have fixed it. So if you have an idea, test the concept, post it on the feedback thread, and then put it aside. Then comes testing disruptive gameplay loops. For example, piracy. In the live environment, testing is meant to be simulating a fully released game, so anything that would be expected there is acceptable testing. In the PTU and EPTU, however, it is a test of features, and you are attacking someone who also has their own testing script that they were trying to complete. Yet piracy, just like mining, does need to be tested. The answer is in paired testing scripts. So for example, your testing script might be to see if it's possible to prevent a Hercules from escaping. Their testing script is to try to escape pirates in a Hercules. And all of you then can approach it as a testing and training exercise. This not only gets you clean data, but is also highly efficient. How many days would it take just flying around for this situation to just randomly happen? So even though testing of 3.23.2 isn't, as of recording started, you can actually get ready for it now by thinking about what your testing script is going to be. And that is being a good tester. Now for an update on our giveaways, we have a special membership to help cover travel costs to have the channel have live CisenCon coverage with its own giveaway for a Hull C. And yes, I'll be giving away the Colossal Cog Container Carrying Craft, even if our live CisenCon coverage has to be remote. Plus, the regular Grow the Channel ship giveaways for giving some lucky player the Zippy Zazzy Zafta ever the Zeus 2 Cargo, which we have met the membership goal of and are now just trying to reach the subscriber goal. So if you're not a subscriber, then you know what to do, right? And then beyond that, the marvelous multiplayer mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member for automatic entry or subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what every good tester should prepare. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verses. Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.